and this is the Source Seeker Hour. I am your host, Baruti Carl Alexander. This is our 125th episode. So it's a trademark, it's a milestone, and I'm very thankful for Dr. McReynolds joining us for this historic episode. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right, I want to get right into it. Um, you are a doctor. You uh, have been to school and, and got your doctorate. Uh, do you believe that having a doctorate, you don't get enough credit? Or let me say it another way. In academia, we, you don't get enough credit. Or academia in this consumer an athletic and entertainment kind of world does not get enough credit. And I'm going to back that up by saying something else about the educational system. Yeah. What do you feel I, about that? You know, I don't think people give uh, science enough credit. And so if you don't give science enough credit, uh, rational thinking credit, uh, a way to try to better understand life from a particular, uh, as we would say, a scientific process where we test, retest, and evaluate and measure that people are not generally um, um, taking to those type of uh, uh, thought processes. Because, you know, and unfortunately, that most of our process, and I'm not banging on anybody's religion, but religion, oftentimes um, we have thought processes that are associated with how we feel, uh, and uh, there's not grounded in science. It's more uh, a feeling, uh, intuition, um, you know, going from a fable or you know, putting our faith in you know things of that rate, nature rather than hard science, things that have been proven over and over again. Yes, I agree with you, but I would also tell you that it is the, the natural course of us as human beings to, and the way I say that is because we are geared for, to see and react to things quickly. Uh, now, when we before we had television, and of course, television hurt in the scientific and uh, thought process because it yeah. gave you a, a, a ready-made image that <clears throat> you can look at and adjust and formulate ideals on instead of you reading and dissecting thought. It gave you a ready-made image. So uh, no, no, that's it, not it that's not the really case. Messed with. Let me finish. It okay. kind of really messed with the academic growth, I would say, in a lot of ways. But go ahead, sir. Well, I think, you know, from what kind of on what we are saying is that television presented images that seemed to be truth and factual when in essence they weren't. They seemed to be presenting scientific fact, but in essence they weren't, you know, so... I think, you know, I'll go with that for education, you know, for television. But I also say that they go with the normal process of human, the way we are, I don't know if that's the way we're supposed to be, but the way that we are is we, we see something, we react quick, and most of us do not want to go through the process, process of actually thinking. Just take human nature that you knew this person 10 years ago. You had a very good um, thought process and understanding of who they were 10 years ago. But let's say they went off uh, and, went and got some whole new experiences and they are a changed person in so many ways now. But it's hard for your mind to adjust to that unless you are presented with new actions. Even though you may not see the change, you are still gonna relate to that person as you knew them, even though they're 10 years older. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the, one of the problems is that, you know, in education or you, the TV, 
particularly the media, they, as you as you're saying, that even though you your thought process maybe try to change, but the media itself portrays images that make you think that maybe your thought process is right, that, you know, you should be wanting the things that you should want is to be an NBA star. You should want to have a big car and a big house. You should want to have more and more and more and more. That should be, you know, those sort of things should be your goal in life rather than to try to help your fellow man, to try to help uh, increase the longevity of all people. So the goals and values in the system generally are, are you know, somewhat corrupt and bankrupt. So yeah, I can, you know, I agree with you. Uh, so many times they try to put you in a category because it's so, it's easier for them to define and to know how to react or how to put you in this box. For instance, left or right in politics, uh, conservative or liberal in politics. They try to put you into those particular boxes and if, if you don't fit into that box, they kind of say, okay, you're over here in the weird category. And yeah, you'll be they, a communist. <laughs> or, or something of that nature. A socialist so, like Bernie and, and Sanders. They, yeah. they try to do that in so many different industries and they try to categorize so many people, uh, yeah. even black black people, militant, yeah. passive, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a a activist, uh, someone that just gonna go along with the plan. They, yeah. they try to label everybody so that they can fit you in an image so that you can be palatable to them as well as you can easily flow with their narratives. They build yeah. up all of these narratives and they try to fit you in so that everything will flow. And it, it's yeah. amazing like that. It yeah. is amazing like that. That's, I really um, want to go into this question with you, Dr. Mm -hmm. McRimmon. Yeah. You were a college professor. Yes, why sir. did you not, why did you not want to continue with that? And uh, share anything you would like to. Oh, basically, I didn't get tenure. And uh, so they didn't uh, care to uh, continue my uh, tenure. And then so I went into uh, administration making uh, three times, four times the money that I was making teaching. Yes. Okay. Well, that, that makes a lot of sense. Now, if I may say, you have a gear toward a different lifestyle than a college professor. Well, yeah, I was I was trying to teach, and that was one of the reasons I think so, that so yeah. I didn't get to stay. Because <laughs> yeah. okay. I was, you know, I was teaching that left wing uh, stuff, so that might be one of the reasons that you know I did, I wasn't uh, I didn't maintain. So you left the <laughs> academic world because they did not allow you to teach. But as you were saying, there's there were more jobs and more situations in the administration right. area. Right. But you're not you're not in there in that area also. Oh no, I, I retired. Or uh, uh, as administration changed, I was uh, terminated uh, after 22 years and then I, you know, I just retired after that. So so after I was terminated from Texas Southern University, yeah, like any other, you know, in, the, in the, my situation is not much different from many, I would say, radical uh, professors at historically black colleges. The more radical you are, the less you'll fit in to, to the program, especially if you're talking uh you know, a lot about black values and, you know, pan-Africanist, uh, you know, uh, more socialist economics or maybe even communistic economics. And so those sorts of things don't sit well generally in, you know, historically black institutions. I, I, I would say you've been out of the 
industry for a while, would it be more palatable, palatable today? No, I don't think so. You don't think so? No. Okay. I um, still hear people, you know, I mean, you still, you know, there are some people out there, don't get me wrong, there are some people uh, out there, but the, the level of activism that uh, I guess some, some professors have, many, uh, many schools don't like that. It, you know, the funders, you know, don't like it. it you know, so it, it, it doesn't help the institution from their perspective. You know, when you're trying to really educate uh, people on the, you know, perils of the system, and, you know, you're trying to show how that the education that they're actually getting is very racist in content that, you know, it's almost like you're trying to bite the hand that's feeding you. And so, you know, when you do that, even though you're being objective, it, you know, that doesn't, you know, doesn't bear weight. Understood. My next question is, do you miss that environment or have you found something that's as easily or more gratifying? Well, you know, to me, I'm I'm just gratified to be living no matter what I'm doing. But, you know, I, I like teaching. Um, you know, I, I get uh, a compliments and, you know, I run into my students every now and then, even though it's been, you know, like almost 20 years ago that I was teaching, you know, I run into my students and they either you know, thank me for the class and the way I conducted the class. And, you know, I'm still somewhat of an educator more and cycling and general health. Uh, just this past weekend, I did a uh, historic tour, tour of Third War, and it wasn't just about history. It was about life and you know economics and you know uh, psychology. <laughs> okay, uh, about psychology, can you go a little bit more into that? Well, you know, one of the things that you know right now that I'm interested very interested in climate change. And if we look out currently, that we see that the powers that be have used the environment at their will without regard to how their use is going to impact the environment and how even later that's going to impact them. And so generally as people, oftentimes, we have, uh, you know, actions, particularly if you go back and look at how the dominant society did, you know, Africans, uh, when they came to this country, they misused them and abused them, just like, you know, almost parallel to what they're doing to the climate. And so the same thing happens, you know, to, you know, African Americans that they abuse and, uh, and uh, oppress for so long. And then you get eruptions and then it, it comes back when you don't expect that it's out of the ordinary, totally uh, something unexpected, just like the uh, uh, situation we're seeing at, in the uh, northern uh, part of the United States today. So you, the, the parallels are almost one in one from having an oppressive attitude toward people, that same oppressive attitude you know, is expressed toward the environment, and then you get, you know, reactions. You mentioned about the northern part of the United States. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's clarify that for our, our well, listeners. Well, I mean, if, 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 if you're looking at the weather right now, <laughs> people people are getting snow like they never got it before, you know. We're um, talking about uh, in New York, know, Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, all across the northern, you know, northern part uh northwestern all the way to northeastern uh storms going across the uh the country and you know record snowstorms where they're rather than um uh, talking about snow in inches we're talking about it in feet and the reason that this is happening is that what the scientists say is that we will see more acute severe weather like we have been seeing because of climate change. And climate change is based upon the way in which we live our lives. We've polluted 
the environment so much that now the environment is striking back, is reacting to all the pollution that we put into the environment. As a layman, let me try to share with the audience, then you correct me, because uh, uh, I'm coming at this as a layman. What we're talking about is emissions from cars, emissions coming out of machines, uh, chemical plant, plants, uh, the, the exhaust that they put into the atmosphere, all of those things add up to uh, worsen our breathing ability, worsen our uh, environment around us and makes it less. And when that happens, it uh, affects our nature. It affects, uh, makes more, more, I guess more flooding happens, more yeah. volcanoes happen. Uh, well, now, I don't know about that? volcanoes. I, I would say, I'd say oh, yeah. more. Now, I, don't, I wouldn't go with volcanoes, but just more severe weather, period. So you, no matter what type of weather it is, especially if it's a you know, storm, it's going to be more severe. If it's a drought, more severe. And really, the, the, uh, the, the problem comes about from generally uh, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, uh, methane, and these different gases or greenhouse gases that actually it's almost like you close the door in a, a hot house where the gases kind of close the door in the house. And so you can't get any air in to cool the house. And so it just heats up and heats up. And then you, you know, what happens, people start to die. And that's what's going to happen with us. It's, we're, a lot of people are going to die. And we see that, you know, it's not, and I say that, we see it happening now. They, they drought over in, um, uh, Ethiopia, uh, uh, Syria, you know, uh, Eastern Africa. Uh, we can see droughts, you know, in Australia. We can even see droughts here in the United States where, you know, crops are not growing like we would expect them to grow. But in the African countries, you know, they were very, very dependent upon the crops. And now with, you know, droughts over, you know, same thing in Pakistan, uh, you know, the droughts over several years, then the people are starting to starve because they don't have any food. They can't grow any food. So what happens, they start to migrate to other places. And then the places that they start to migrate can't take all these millions of people that are coming that are starving because the people that were there weren't doing that great. You know, so, um, you know, I, I, we're in a I got, pretty bad situation. I got two points on this from mm -hmm. a layman. Yeah. And I've talked to you about this before. Uh, from a creation standpoint, we, from that perspective, it's almost like we saying, no matter what we do as human beings, there's a, a creator bigger than this and foresaw all of these possibilities and he made the earth where it can withstand whatever we do to it, and it'll correct itself. What do you say to that? I have no proof or no uh, understanding of any type of creator on an infinite universe. The whole concept of infinity itself says that it cannot be created. Matter cannot be created nor destroyed. So within my scientific framework, there's no room for something to create something. Things develop and change, and they've been doing that for billions and, you know, for the time. There's no, there's no beginning to time and no end of time that all this matter has existed. It's just changed throughout the, throughout the millennia. So, no, I don't agree with that. I, I, let me be clear. Are you saying there was not a creator that created this? or you? Just That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay, that's deep right there. No, we may not. get some comments from our it's Facebook. Not, it's audience. not. It's not. It's not. It's not deep because it depends on how you talk about the creator. That, but you talk when you say creator, that generally talks about an entity. 
but there's no, no entity. I, let, me, let me back up and, and, and say, I, I mean, from our concept, that would be the easiest way to try to define it. Let me no, let, no, let me no, say no, no. I, I understand what that's you're saying. That's not the easiest but, way to define but let me, it, no. Let me play devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. That's not a good word in this situation. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, you are. You're playing the devil. Okay. Advocate. But <laughs> some kind of way life started. You agree with that? Yeah, we're living. We're living. Okay. Yeah. Some kind of way, because we see. But how, you say life started, and that that in itself starts to say a beginning. So what I would really say is life has always existed possibly in some different forms than we know it at this point in time. Well, that, that goes back to the, the concept that uh, we, we started out as uh, monkeys or gorillas because we started in a different form. Mm, but yeah, even in that, that's a, even in that yeah. history, I would say, well, who started the monkey? Who, start, who, who created the first entity that put together uh, the embryo that became life. Yeah, but that logic, the logic that you're asking is basically irrational. Okay. Given, well, I, given that you ask who, and if you answer who, who had always had to have been here? So therefore, if who was here, everything that who used was also here so actually, who is everything? Okay, well, let me come back to that. Uh, by our concept of understanding, that's, that's all I can go by. But we you're not going, a, you, when you, when, I'm sorry, when you say our concept, our concept depends on, you know, if you take in a, a religious perspective, which is not founded in science. It's definitely not founded in science. But if you take a scientific perspective, then from a science, you can talk from a about, science you know. perspective, every mammal, which we are mammals, started as a embryo in some form. Is that true? Every yeah, all the mammals, yeah, I mean, they're, embryo. They, that life itself reproduces. Yes, life reproduces okay. itself. Yes. So. From that train of thought, then, because I don't have any other train of thought. Now you say what is has always been. That is not the way that mammals, animals, uh, beings have existed as far as we know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What? But the, remember what we said was you. You said I don't agree with particularly okay. that that, you know, maybe humans came from monkeys, but the monkeys had to come I, from no, somewhere. No, I said, given, given that- Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm just using that as an example. Okay, not, go not ahead. A, you go know, ahead. that there was some type of evolution. Yeah. Let's just say that, that there was some type of evolution. But even given evolution, evolution is nothing but change. And so all we're really talking about is infinite types of change and we're only defining a particular time of change, the time uh, that we're, we can think about, maybe uh, 5,000, 15 billion years or something like that. But the time that we really have to deal with is infinity. Okay. And so we can't even comp contemplate what has gone on in infinity and what will continue to go on in infinity. But one thing we do know is what is happening right now. We cannot prove in any kind of way an infinity aspect, though. Yes, we, we can. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The yeah, process, yeah. the process that we know we no. can prove is no. we started at or being started in, in, in a beginning. No, 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 no. That's not the case. That's okay. not what science says. Science says. Are you matter or are you something else? What are you made of? What are you? What are you? But even matter. Are you? Uh, yes. Okay, go ahead. But even matter. Now, if we're talking about the scientific elements, okay, they were here. And 
we take they were here. Yeah, where they come now, from? Okay, <laughs> now let, let, let's get to that. As far as we know, they were they came when the the planet, quote unquote, was created. Now we got to go to was the planet created or was the planet all, all, always here? Was Saturn? Well, it always depends here? on it. It depends. Like if you go back and look at your gene genealogy, and that and that's one of the ways that's to look at somewhat infinity. That I go back and I can see my relationships. That without those things in my past. I would not be here. So really, all those things in my past, all those, my great, great, great grandparents, all those people had my seed there. And really, I was in there all along. And then now here I am. But it's only I can go back and trace that lineage. And so you can go back if you could and look back in time. And that's what we do what you, you you kind of hinted on, that we go back and kind of trace genes back and we see maybe something like, you know, uh, the earliest, you know, one of the early humanoids uh, like Lucy or something like that three, four million years ago, uh, we'll go back to that. And then we could actually probably go back to something beyond that. But what I'm saying is that we have all everything really, and that's another 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 problem of thinking is that there's really no separation between you and I and everything else that we're all talking about one massive existence, one massive thing. So that that is not in debate. What is in debate is is there a beginning? No. Okay. No. No. Now that is. The debate that we're not going to It's not a solve debate. Today. It's not a debate. Okay, it's not a I debate. It, it, you have your opinion. It's not I an have... opinion. It's okay, fact. go ahead. It's fact that if matter cannot, if you believe in science, yeah, and you, okay, well, matter cannot be created nor destroyed. So the things that make you up have always been here. And when you break you down, they will always be here. And they will reorganize and redo whatever, you know, and make what whatever. You know, Again, like when I go to... back to this this summation from what you're saying. So the things of matter, so like like a piece of gold, a piece of coal, a, a piece of, of those elements. They have always been here, is what you're saying. Yes. yes and yes, so, yes, therefore, yes. since they are come inside the planet, the planet has always been here. Well, no, 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 no. The elements of the planet has always been here. The things that, that compose the planet, and that's where you, when we talk of in separation, that things are separate and distinct from others, then we start to talk about them as an entity developing. But if we start to really understand the universe, that the universe is a whole and it's infinite. And so the whole has always existed. Now you start to talk about some of the parts. Well, really, the, it's still, when you even talk about the parts, it's still the whole. You're only looking at, it's like looking at so the tail. So were, were the, all the planets that we know in the quote unquote Milky Way, which is just the system that we know have were they all one and broke into different uh, planets? Are, are are they connected? Uh, no, no. What I'm saying is that the, the the thing of separation, where we see the Milky Way as separate from other galaxies, that galaxies in themselves make up. I don't know. Let's call it. I don't know, super duper solar, super, uh, super duper universe. Well, galaxies make up the universe, which is an infinite uh, um, existence, it's an existence that's infinite. And so when you start to talk about infinite, you can't 
use finite logic in the, you know, in, in thinking about insanity. So you talk about your know, how the planet's always been here. Yeah, everything has always been here, not in the form that it is now, but the matter and the things that compose it, it's always been here. And it's going to always be here. It's going to change. But Okay, this is what I want to do. First, I want to remind everybody, this is our 121st 25th episode. I'm here with Dr. Vion McReynolds, extraordinaire, great man, and we are talking about infinity, and we're going to come back to that. There are a number of things I would like to talk to you about, then I want to come back to infinity. That's where we're going to end our show up. Uh, I want to talk about the the balloon, China balloon. What, what, what is your opinion on that? <laughs> well, you know, I don't want to say some bad words, but I think it was a bunch of bull. You know, uh, in what way? It's almost like after I, you know, started to have some research that, you know, the United States has uh, satellites and everything over looking in China. But they ain't saying nothing about that. They looking over in China and seeing what they doing over there. And, you know, so China sent out a, a balloon. And I doubt, I mean, why am I going to send out a spy balloon over your country? And then you're going to destroy this balloon? If that balloon was as big as they say it is, that was a lot of millions of dollars that they didn't want to lose, I'm sure, just to fly it over the United States. and you know, you know that there's going to be some backlash. So to me, it was just, you know, some hoopla. That's all. Just basic hoopla. And just to kind of, you know, we'd have to go back and look at where the news were diverted from, you know, because oftentimes those kind of news stories are diversionary news stories. Then, you know, the, the funny thing, after we see one balloon, there's a balloon over here, the balloon over there. Here's the balloon. Shoot, shoot down this balloon. You know? And they said they had been sending <laughs> balloons all along. And yeah. now they said three of them happened while Trump was president. Right, right, right. You know, and so th there's a lot of that stuff that goes around. But, you know, I think it was more sensationalism than anything else. Okay. You know? uh, yeah. What is your opinion of the crypto market that has fallen out of the a first a disclaimer i put eight hundred dollars in there and my value went down to about 150 dollars last i looked so i'm not putting no money more money in the crypto market i don't care what they tell me because yeah um you they, know go ahead yeah i don't know i you know i've lost a lot of money in the stock market uh sometimes it's manipulation but uh you know, the crypto market, it was manipulated. Uh, you know, sometimes I've invested in the cryptos, went for a while, uh, Bitcoin. And, you know, some days you could make, uh, you know, day trading. You could make quite a bit of money because it was fluctuating crazy. Uh, so, but, you know, and that's what happened now. And the thing is, I don't know, uh, uh, cryptos, have, that that's a currency. So you are actually bought something, but... You know, if you sold it, if you could sell it short, then that would be the way to go. But I don't know who's buying. So you got to have somebody buying to sell short. So, I'm yeah. I'm not buying no I, more. I mean, it well, could buy no, yeah, yeah, I'm buying. I'm saying selling short, you would buy it thinking that it's going to go down or even more lower than what it is. But, you no, know, it's probably I'm, too I'm late for that. Buy it. But, you know, they, that, that's one of the things that, you know, if I know now that, you know, people investment, that I think one of the best investments, you know, that you can do is property investments and, you know, uh, investing in growing food. So, you know, or water, you know, food, water, property, you know, those, you know, the real, real stuff, you know, so. I, I just uh, want to say, get water. and aside, based upon what you were just saying, I just had a, I just wrote a letter to my, church that I was a missionary on and I told them the mistake that you all made is you just invested in quote unquote property buildings and different things but you threw people away 
You did not invest in people. Yeah. And yeah. if you don't invest in people, you don't have nobody to till that property. You don't have nobody right, to take right, care of it. Right. And yeah. that's what happened to them. And you know, I, I'd say in 1990, they had 10 to 20,000 people in the whole mm. church. But today, wow. if 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 they have 300, I mean, that's mm. a stretch. Yeah. No yeah, values change. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Okay, yeah. my next question is, what do you see in the political campaign coming up? Is are, are is everybody tired of Trump? Or are they going to let him get back? Uh, is Biden well, you know, and it's a, it, I, I just want to put this it's aside. Interesting. It's really interesting the Trump uh, thing because uh, we that Trump still might be the the primary candidate because there's so many other people in the field. And I don't know, it depends on how strong DeSantis uh, comes out. But, you know... Who you said uh, DeSantis? Yeah, that, you know, how, how strong he, he becomes. I give that you another is, uh, Republican candidate that I think can beat both of those. Tim Scott. Yeah, but the, the name recognition and that DeSantos has is, you know, far beyond any other candidate that when Obama first field. started, he didn't have name recognition. Uh yeah, well, I mean, you know, it depends on your money. Money is the, that's the thing that you know, the ability to raise money, that if you can raise money, then that becomes a you know, money makes a difference. It's not about uh, you know, what the how good the candidate is, really is almost about how much money you have and how good is your advertising agency. He got and a that's lot the way, of you know, it works. Republican backers who are behind him. But also mm -hmm. Nikki Haley is a, a, in the in the hunt. So we'll yeah. see. And now in yeah. the Democratic side, I don't think uh, Biden got, has a good chance. Uh, you don't I, think I he think has Kamala a good Harris chance? Kamala Harris has less, less of a chance, huh? You don't think he has a good chance? There's no He's other Democrat. He's 80 years old. Uh, and just watch. I him. think Gavin Newsom has the best <laughs> chance. Just watch him. Just watch him. That's oh, what he okay. said. Just watch him. <laughs> but All right. I, I mean. want to get back to this uh, question that you had mentioned to me when we were doing our preparation. Mm -hmm. Mental illness. You said that climate change has an effect. There's so much mental illness going on. It's affected my life. It's affected your life. It affects everybody all around us. Yes, there are a lot of factors that factor into mental illness. I would say that the TV has just as much impact as our environment. Also, uh, the TV, uh, just the nature of relationships as they are today, uh, because you know, men and women when they can't get along with when an immature man cannot find a good woman, he might go crazy because he's immature and he can't handle <laughs> it. No, I'm serious. Yeah. Oh serious. yeah, I mean that that might be what's happening now. We see all these uh people getting shot all across the country every day. There's you know, massive uh, shooting, you know. So uh yeah, yeah no doubt. I one time said that prostitution should be legal in, in some cases yeah. because yeah. of it would it would cut down the shootings in a lot of ways. It would I cut don't know it about down. that, but it might. <laughs> it might. If you're doing something now, else, you ain't got then, time to shoot. Then the women may may start them some shootings, but you know, yeah. don't get yeah. me. Well, this is live. I already got myself in trouble. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, I'm serious about that. In that context, you know, there would have to be some security uh, kind of things built in, but also probably legalizing marijuana can help maybe across the board. I haven't seen the research. Uh, I know they're doing research in the states that they've legalized it in. I haven't seen a, a big swath of that research, but I haven't heard of nobody uh, 
high on marijuana, doing you know crazy things. You more so just sit back and chill. Now yeah, I'm generally, not advocating but... it for uh, uh, for just out in the open for everybody, but for some people it'd be a good thing. For some yeah. people it'd be a good yeah. thing. So I it's think just it like alcohol be... can be good. Everything can can be good. Everything has the potential to be good, can be yes, medicine, but you know. Even everything. in a situation where guns can be good in certain situations, yeah. but they can be detrimental in others. And it has to and, be- And from what we're like seeing, that. let me just make this comment about guns. People, you know, always, you know, saying we need to do something about guns. We need to do something about guns. The simplest and easiest thing to do with gun is to ban all guns. And so if you ban all guns, then you don't have to worry about a nine-year-old kid finding a gun at home and going, I mean, a six-year-old, what a nine, well, there's probably been a nine, but well, a six-year-old kid going to school and killing somebody. That'll never happen. The well, reason that's it, not that's not necessarily the case. I mean, uh, there that are would countries, never happen as society stands now. No, because no, guns, no. Uh, uh, the uh, I don't know if you know who uh, the odd boy is, Park Parkland, the Parkland uh, student. Mm -hmm. He was yeah, one of the yeah. presidents, and he had a very good campaign against guns. But the Republicans, the conservatives, attacked him like. Heavy. Right. And, and, the, yeah. and the real thing is, it is conservative or a certain segment of the community's last bastion of power and strength that they're not going to give up. It, it, it's their guarantee to keep the rowdies, quote unquote, black and browns under control. Because well, they say, <laughs> hey, even if they get wild and crazy, we can get we can get them back under control if we got to. We can yeah. get guns out, and we not uh, no. That's why they don't want to uh, get rid of assault uh, weapons. They don't want to get rid of assault weapons because push come to shove, somebody get attacked by five or six black men. They say, okay, I got all of y'all. That's that. Yeah. Thing. Well, actually, a pump shotgun might be just as good. Yes. Depending on where it is, you know where you're at. But I'm just telling you, uh, banning all guns will never happen. Now, well, that would let me tell you that that would be a solution. Okay. That if we had no guns, no civilians anywhere with guns, if you caught with guns, we don't need to be hunting. You can get, you know, go. You can go home and buy your meat because, and the reason, the reason is that we have too many people being killed and just randomly kill. It'd be different if it wasn't happening, but it's just like, you know, we, during the pandemic, we had to shut people up into their, you know, houses. Uh, we had to start operating a totally different way because people were dying. And we have people dying at random now from guns. So it's, you know, it's just taking that step forward, but it's just like with climate change. We can see that w the things that we're doing on a daily basis is, you know, still polluting the climate. We're driving our cars, we're using our air conditioners, we're blow burning up, burning up fossil fuels, consuming products. Even if you're not driving a car, if you consume anything, it was produced generally with fossil fuels. So the more you consume, the more the fossil fuels you're consuming. Anyway, so consumption is part of the whole climate change problem. So, you know, we're not stopping that either. So just like our same mental process. I of think seeing, we got more of a chance to, to modify fossil fuel use because we're coming up with other <laughs> things. And eventually, you know, electricity can become more of a use. Solar it's plant. a joke. It's a joke. Okay. That what you see, like... Let's just go, but let's think for a minute. Okay, we're going to have electric cars. Well, how are we going to make those electric cars? We're going to have to do something to get the electric. 
The, and what we're trying to do is mimic the lifestyle that we currently have, which is, let's use this word, unsustainable. So actually, electric cars in themselves are unsustainable given the amount of pre-use that you have to do, the manufacturing that has to go on, the mining, and the, the degradation of the earth in order to get the components for the solar? battery. Same thing. Solar is batteries. It's all battery technology. That solar, you really don't have any energy that you can save if you don't have batteries. So, and then you still have to make the solar arrays. You have to have some way to put that up. You have to have some electricity. And the other thing about solar, well, what happens when the solar goes down and there's nothing there? What are we going to use then? So we got to go and right back. Solar based to upon those... uh, taking in rays from the sun? Yeah. So what happens when you get, you know, this climate change and you get an unprecedented 40 cloudy days? in a row. What are you okay. going to do? What the hospital is going to do that's running off of solar? They have to run off of fossil fuels. So this, you know, if we continue this same type of lifestyle, then we're not going to, it's not sustainable. And that's what we're talking about is we're saying, okay, we're going to have the same type of lifestyle, but we're going to do it with solar and wind and water and maybe some geothermal uh, stuff, that that's the way we're going to continue. And we want to continue to live the same way. And this lifestyle that we're living is not sustainable. If you want to see a sustainable lifestyle any, anywhere in the world, you can pick. Just go look at those countries that are not producing a large amount of, of uh, uh, CO2 or, uh, or um, the uh, greenhouse gases. Those countries that are producing very little greenhouse gases, look at the way they live. And you can go- Give me you know, an example. Left, uh, well, I just left Peru. Peru would be one. Uh, 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 so Pakistan. They, they have Pakistan a whole lot of cars. definitely one. Pardon? They don't have a whole lot of cars? Well, they, they may have cars. They don't have a lot of cars, but- they, they don't have the industry and they don't have the level of consumption that we have. No, no, they don't. So, and so more people use bicycles and walk like they did in Tanzania? Yeah, and they, you know, farm, they farm by hand rather than, you know, using machinery, you know, so, um, you know, we can see those, you know, that, that where where people are are still, you know, the Amish. The Amish is a real good example of sustainable living, you know, where they, you know, they don't use a bunch of uh, fossil fuels. They uh, I, you know, just I, live I off of what they get. Mm -hmm. We are more prone to move away from fossil fuels and use alternative sources of energy rather than get rid of our guns i believe yeah you're probably you're probably right about that both of them are pretty stupid you know i can remember being a young tyke and thinking that i needed a gun have a gun have my little gun that i carry you know i carry my gun to the club somebody mess with me i'm gonna shoot them you know that's my mindset why can't i have a mindset uh if there's trouble i'm going to avoid it I'm going to make it my business to know how to avoid trouble. And then if we don't have the guns, then the type of trouble that you're going to encounter generally isn't as deadly as the type of trouble you encounter now. Because somebody busts in my door with an AK? Yeah. I, I, I rather bust in there with this. a knife. Pardon? I just think about this, you know, you can go into a, a store and there's somebody somebody in there robbing it. You ain't got it. And when when that happens and they pull the gun on you, you your your gun is back in your car. You don't have that opportunity. And that and those type of situations would happen a lot as opposed to 
I just left out the store five minutes before that guy walked in. And that's kind of a God spiritual. Uh, we're going to get yeah. back to that. But I kind of look at life like that. You know, that mm -hmm. I, I, I try to have a spirit where uh, I, I'm trying to carry a, a, a non-confrontational, but yeah. however, don't mess with me, spirit with me. And yeah. because yeah. even if you got a gun, you might not have a gun at the specific time. You can have a gun. It can be in your house locked up. You can have it in your car, in your trunk. And right. at the exact moment, you don't have access to it. So yeah. that's the way I look at life and so forth. Um, yeah. I'd like to... I'd like for you to say anything you want to share about climate change. I still believe that at the end of the day, the earth will correct itself. And yeah, it is. That's, that's I, what I it's doing even, now. No matter, no matter, no matter what we do to it, the earth is going to correct. It's only going to let humanity do so much before it starts correcting itself. So when the ice caps melt and it pour, pours a whole lot of water in, it'll go into such a way that it will not uh, destroy the earth. It might destroy some human beings, but it ain't going to destroy the earth. And no, the earth is not going to be like, destroyed. It's just like human no. beings mm. will continue to find a way to live, even if we blow up uh, half of the earth Somebody's still going to survive. I don't believe in the Armageddon that everybody's going to be gone. But I don't say, know. I'd like to get back to this because we got about 10 minutes left. Mm -hmm. Infinity and beginning. Right. Infinity and beginning. I believe that there was a beginning. Now, there is a quote unquote a God. A, a, a entity. Let me finish and then I want you to come back to me. There's some type of entity. Now, this is the way that I wrote about the entity. There is an endless stream of electricity that we can't see it, but there's an endless stream of electricity that goes all throughout the cosmos. And to give you an example, when Jesus was able to pray and pray and pray, and he, he transfigured. The Bible says he transfigured. He connected with that energy field temporarily, and he became one with God. And God is not a, you know, he, he does not come in and he decides what happens over here. He decides what happens. That's not how God is. But God is an energy field now. What he can, what it does do is it, it 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 goes into human beings and helps create a thought pattern, and from the thought patterns that were always in God of good in that electric field. Now and then we have a universal spirit within us which beyond our level of understanding, we can go to another level and become non-human uh, like our ancestors. Our ancestors are, are still have influence in our spirit. Now, they can put a thought in there, but it's up to us to say yay or nay. That's what I think. It, now, it's sketchy. I, I understand that. It's sketchy. Yeah, yeah, very it's, sketchy. I'm yeah. okay with that because okay, it's, it's, all right. a deep well, it's a deep concept. It's a deep concept. And I try to write about it, but yeah. it's still sketchy because it's deeper yeah. than, but I, but I still think God is the ultimate uh, electric energy field that we can, uh, uh, we can connect with for brief moments, brief seconds. And then there are ancestors. There are different levels of connection with God, but that electric energy field, has it always been here? I don't know. You present an interesting thing. I have to think 
the Big Bang Theory is the best, the best. But who started the Big Bang? Who now, started? there you go. Now you're thinking. That's the thinking. That's the type of thinking you want to have. That there had to be something for to go bang when the Big Bang went bang. So it had to be something to go bang. And even before it went bang, it was doing something to get ready. It had to get ready. Don't nothing just go bang all of a sudden. It had to get ready to go bang. Because following the logic from the bang, that once it went bang, stuff kept on going. Mm -hmm. Look at how the order of things is. Isn't that an intelligence 365 days around the earth? Come on. Well, what about it? I mean, the order of things. We can only go so far in the atmosphere before we burn up, but we're protected uh, inside of that. Mm -hmm. you, you, we got the nour nourishment of water that can do so right. many things for our, for for all of nature, all of humanity, all of mammals. Right. You got mm -hmm. all of these particular things that help take care of themselves. You got or you got the sun. The sun comes down on the on the plant and helps it. Right. Right, right. Yeah. Come on now. That's the, yeah, that's just the way it is. No, that, that doesn't just happen by happenstance. No, yeah, it that's did. why yes, it has it to did. be some yes, it intelligent did. It, it, creator. That no, 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 no. But but then in that case, in that case, you would have to have somebody to create the intelligent creator. And everything following from that, if everything has to be created, then something constantly creates. No, there has to be. Something to start everything. We got to believe there was a beginning. So why do we have to what, look that, what you just said? There have to be an intelligent creator to create the intelligent creator. Right. Exactly. And so so in that case, you keep going back and back with the same argument, and then you get to infinity, and the intelligent creator has always been here and will always be here. And it, it's actually everything that exists in the universe. That's it. Simple. It's so simple that we can't see it. <laughs> we can't okay. see the forest for the trees. Now, see, yeah. I go back to my uh, uh, endless infinity uh, energy field, which mm -hmm. is God. And okay. I, 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 I had that concept. But I got to believe that, see, it, it, it's really beyond our thought. How did the, 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 the being, you say there's no beginning. He was, it was always here. That's right. That's a hard concept. No, that's a hard concept for you culturally to accept because you've been indoctrinated and miseducated all your life, that, and then everybody around you has that same type of indoctrination. So for you to think like a Muslim or for you to think like a Hindu or for you to even think like an atheist is beyond you because of the way you've been conditioned. And until you break off of, out of that conditioned thought, you can't conceive of doing it another way. Just like, you know, we personally can't see of going out and, you know, getting some roaches and eating the roach heads, you know, but people in China, that's what they're used to. They're conditioned with that. And they just like, shit, these roaches is good, dog, you know? And so it's like, even for some people, it's, it's a little different, but just like eating chitlins, you know, some people, oh, no, you know, and then others is the same, but your it's the your concept, you know, the way in which you view the world. And unfortunately, the, the only thing I'll say is, and I go back to this: everything that we know that goes through an existence, as far as a living being, starts as some type of larva, some type of embryo. Okay. They they have a beginning, but as far as we know, uh, that first embryo or that first 
full animal was always here is what you're saying. And then everything else came from that first animal that was always here. That's what you're saying. Well, well I didn't say the first animal. That I'm not saying that. I'm saying the, I mean, the components, well, the structure, the thing that brought the things that caused this animal to be in existence were always here, that they were are not new. And, and, that and they you were always a, here. A Star Trek before uh, this episode where the nucleo acids and different things that are able to make up and help make up the human being. Mm -hmm. They go mm -hmm. and find that and they go and say, okay, this must be where things actually started. Well, some kind of way, even in that concept, certain things had to hit that, activate it to help it to mold. Now, right. did it hit that and activate that in such a way, some intelligent being had to say, let's take these elements and let's make man. Yeah, well, you know, it didn't happen. yeah, well, it just happened. Let me give you an example that you can go out in, in probably, you know, even in Pakistan right now, even here in Houston, that there are frogs that are living in the ground that are not going to come out until a certain amount of rain occurs. And there's a whole bunch of species that are not going to do anything. It may be five, it could be 10, it, some of them, it could be 20, 30 years until the conditions are right for that life to, you know, occur. So you have to have certain conditions existing before the, what you're calling life, you know, to exist. But some people, you know, they see rocks as living. They would see gold as a living thing. So, you know, it just depends on how your view of life, that everything is living. But everything is not living. I well, mean, that's, that's, that just I, depends I on how you... rock is living. Well, it has... It, if you look at it and look on the inside of it, it has stuff that's moving. It's moving in there. It exists. Only so worms are inside existence. it. The Only worms are inside itself. it. Pardon? Only worms are inside no, it. No, 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 no. If you look on a molecular level, the molecular level that the things going on inside the rock would be very similar to things going on inside you on a molecular level. Not as, as, as the same but things would be going on. Just like the gold in my body, when I look at that gold and, and just plain old gold, the same type of molecular activity, electrons doing stuff with electrons and protons and you know all that stuff is happening there, just like it's happening inside my body. So, you know, it's just how you conceptualize life. Generally, we talk about life as those things that can be reproduced. Well, that sounds like another show, Dr. McReynolds. We, we, another show with matter being alive. Yeah. And we're going to have matter. To, we, All matter is living. We're yeah. going to have to talk about that when it's only yeah. when it's impacted by some energy, some velocity force. Well, it's, it's always being impacted by a velocity force. When you pick it up and put it in your hand, it's being okay. impacted. You know? But so yeah, it, it certainly doesn't change its molecular structure without. Yes, it does. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, when you touch it, you touch it, you change the molecular structure immediately, and it changes yours too. When you touch, only it. if you're putting a certain amount of force on it. No, no, no. Just being close to it, you change it. Just being in the field, just existing. That's okay. part of. Okay, we're gonna have existence. to go into the subject in a yeah. part two time. Yeah, quantum mechanics. Yeah. Yeah. It goes yeah. away from the traditional aspects that us laymen have learned, but we're gonna no, have to some uh, the, the way we've been conditioned to think that we've been conditioned. We don't even know how to eat. 
we think just anything we put in our mouth is good, you know? So, yeah. Well, that, yeah that's you're right. another show also. Yeah, that's another I wanted show, to get yeah. to that healthy mm -hmm. living, but yeah. that, we need a whole show for that one. Healthy right, living. right. We are at okay. the end of our episode. Okay. Uh, this has been uh, episode 125, and we're going to uh, talk a little bit. I'm going to ask him to maybe go through a few infinity beginning questions online, and maybe we can chime in there. I'm talking about maybe just uh, I ask you some questions in writing. Maybe you have answer a little bit, and let's see what our audience says. But when, this when would this be today, like right now? Are you talking no. about now or later? Oh, no, okay. later. Oh, okay. All right, cool, cool, the, cool. Yeah. We yeah, have the yeah. episode right now. Okay, all right, cool. And, cool, and we cool. had a very powerful discussion about yeah. the, exist, the existence of a supreme creator. Yeah. We had that discussion. <laughs> and yeah. uh, we got a, a lot of understanding and Questions on both sides. Right. Okay. And uh, very, very interesting. We talked about infinity and beginning, even related to that. So we're going to continue this discussion with the powerful and fabulous Dr. V.M. McReynolds. Thank you very much for being on the 125th episode of the Source Seeker Hour. It's been great, and we got to do it again. We need part two and part three. So I'll be All right. And, okay, thank you. Uh, everybody out there, we thank you very much. And we will see you next time. Uh, coming up, and I want to say this, and I want everybody to uh, chime in on this hot episode on education on fire. We're going to talk about all aspects of it. And we're going to talk about should teachers get immunity? Should uh, the salaries be raised much greater. What are we going to do about school violence? You can't learn, you can't teach if you're worried about getting shot. You can't do that. <laughs> so we're really going to have to talk about education on fire. We're going to have Dr. Cleo uh, Wadley. We're going to have uh, Sister uh, uh, Arnetta Murray. And we're going to have Brother Delvin Rogers and a, a few more panelists. And it's going to be a powerful occasion on the source seeker hour we're back we're online we're uh coming to your homes facebook live zoom we look forward to it. a last word dr McReynolds. oh just change your lifestyle to be healthy and if you change your lifestyle to be a healthy lifestyle it will also help the planet and uh we can hopefully change this climate to something that we need but when we talk about that subject of healthy lifestyle, healthy life, we got to talk about the mentality because you can hear the words all you want to, but you got to build up the mentality of, of discipline for a healthy life because you got to have to take out all the distractions and you got to put that in your, in your DNA of what it means to be healthy and it, it, you have to come to that grips with that. So that's just as important as telling people the words. How can we get there in the mind? And right. we're going to talk about that next time. We'll see you later on the right. social hour. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you later.